Hello everybody, this is the fourth lesson on MS Excel and in this lesson we are going to learn about cell referencing and formulas. What is cell referencing? Cell referencing is when we use any cell address in formulas, we reference to that cell. Now there are three kinds of cell referencing, relative cell referencing, absolute cell referencing and mixed cell referencing. What is relative cell referencing? When you write a formula in one particular cell and you want to apply those formulas on other cells also, we copy the formula to a new cell. Now when the formula is copied to a new cell, the corresponding cell address changes with reference or with relative to the new cell address. Now see some examples of cell referencing over here, relative one, C15, F2, D20. So it is just the column name and the row number. Whereas in absolute cell referencing when the formula is copied, the corresponding cell address does not change or in other words the cell preference is locked. Now we, uh, we lock the column and the rows by prefixing a dollar with the column name or the row number like it is designated in a formula by addition of a dollar sign before the row and column. Now, in absolute referencing, you must take note that the dollar sign is put before the column name and the row number, not any one of them. It has to be both. Both column and row has to be locked. Then only we can say that it is a absolute referencing. But in some cases, we lock the row but not the column. That is like in the third type, which is the mixed referencing, that A dollar 3. So there is no dollar sign before the column name. So the column is not locked, but the row is locked. See in the second example, the column is locked, but the row is not locked. And we will also do formulas. And in formulas, we will do sum, average, max, min, count and finding rank. Sum is to find all the sum of all the values or data in the cell range that will be passed as parameter. Average will be to find the average of those data. Maximum and minimum will be you found out, uh, will be calculated by using the functions max and min. Count is used to count how many cells have a particular kind of data. Those criteria and range will be given within the brackets as parameter and rank is to find the uh, order. Now let's move to our excel sheet where we will, we will be learning all this. I have prepared an excel sheet for you from before. Over here we are going to apply the formulas and through these we will also learn referencing. So for total we will write equal to sum. All formulas must start with an equal to sign. Now within brackets I will give the range. Now I will type the range or I can also select and give the range. Let me type the range for this example. Now we know how to specify a range. We will give the cell address of the first cell colon the last cell. So this is my first cell. So in this cell G3 we are going to write the formula to find the sum. So all formulas start with an equal to sign SUM or you can give in capitals also SUM and within brackets we will give the range of the cells in which you have to apply the sum. So I can type or I can select and give the range. So I will type for this example. So the first cell is this one which is C3 and the last cell is F3. So C3 colon F3. So you see as soon as I finished writing the uh, formula the range of cell was automatically selected and then I will not click anywhere. I will press the enter key from the keyboard. So that is the total. Now what I am going to do is I am going to 
extend this formula and I will click and drag and bring it till the last cell. Now you see you typed this one which is this formula C3 to F3. But now if you click on this, this cell, see it is C over here in the formula bar, it is C4 colon F4. You did not type C4 colon F4, but the computer has used relative referencing to determine the range for the next sum. So the, here they are using the relative referencing to fill in all the cells in this column because I had given a relative referencing without dollars. Now let us come to the average. Now for the average what I am going to do is I am going to use the average function equal to A-V-E-R-A-G-E -E, that is the name of the function and you can also see that the computer is prompting you the function. Now within the form bracket I am going to give the range. In this example I will click and show. So I will click and drag. We will click in the first cell and drag till the last cell and press the enter key from the keyboard. So again this is again a relative referencing because dollar sign is not used. Now if you want and I want to apply this formula to all of these cells then it is being filled up. So you just extend. So oh, this is the autofill. Now let us come to max. Max, I am going to find out the maximum marks in all the subjects, the total and the average also. So I will use the formula max equal to max. This is the name of the function and within the brackets, I will give the range. I will click and select. So you can see the that 95 is the maximum. Similarly, over here, I will find the minimum min and within the brackets I will give the range. Again I will click and drag to the last cell. So 95 is the maximum marks obtained in maths and 45 is the minimum. Now I would like to apply this formula to all these cells also. So again I will be clicking on this cell. I selected this cell and made this the active cell. I will bring the mouse pointer to this corner and then I will see that the cursor has changed. When the cursor has changed, I will click and I will drag and bring it till the cell. I want to copy the formula. So and I will release the mouse button. So when I do so, this row is filled with the maximum of these ranges. So if you click on any one of these cells, you will see the formula over here. See? If you select on this cell and you come here and click, it will give you the range on which it has applied the formula. I will press enter to come out of this formula mode. In the minimum also, I will autofill and apply to all the columns. Now what I am going to do is count. So here I will give the unconditional count and press enter. I have to give the range. So I have given the range. It is B3 colon B10. So in these cells there is no numeric data. If I extend it over these, then I will see each one of them they are giving me 8 because in this range there are 8 numbers. Now for red. Now in order to count how many students are there in the red house, I will use the conditional if which is known as COUNTIF equals to C-O-U-N-T-I-F and within the brackets I will give in which range I want, in which range and I want and what I, what I am searching for. So within double quotes I will give red and press the enter button. So you can see over here only two girls are there in red house so it is giving you red. So, if I change this to red, then the number should change to 3. See, the number has changed to 3. So, I will increase the font a little for you to see properly. So, this is what if analysis. Now, if this also becomes red, then there are 4 girls now. Now, see the count is also changing. So over here when it is unconditional count just for counting how many cells have data members then it is 
only count function and when it is a conditional count where we are looking for word or any uh, counting based on a certain condition we will use count if now we will come to a very important function which is called the rank function i will type so this is the rank and within the brackets we have to give some parameter now here you see they are asking for three uh, data three uh, parameters over here the first one is whose rank you want to find out so i want to find out the rank of this number comma then comes the reference reference means which is the set of numbers within which you are going to do the ranking system so i want in this range of numbers okay now in this range we will lock this range by giving a dollar sign so here we will be using some absolute referencing now this is very important that the range must be of absolute referencing otherwise the ranking will not come in the correct form comma now here you see the third parameter is an order if you give 0 then the ranking will be in the descending order and if you give 1 then the ranking will be in the ascending order so we will give in the descending order so the student who has scored the maximum will be given 1 and enter okay so, and then i will extend this to all the cells so you can see very well that this student 77% she has got is the first rank this is a second third third rank fourth rank in this way if you don't give the dollar sign then the ranking will come incorrect so with this we have come to the end of today's lesson i hope you have enjoyed the lesson and you will practice the formulas and cell referencing on your own thank you